Hello everyone, welcome to a bit of a different video for my channel. Uh, it's been quite a bit since I posted actually, but I'm bringing uh, more of a tutorial style video actually. This is going to be over the plugin residence. Uh, I've been working with it quite a bit lately, uh, helping out a Minecraft server. Uh, it's called Avius. I will place all of the information about um, the server in the description, uh, as well as a link to Mike's video explaining what Avius is uh, and all that detail there. Um, that's that's not that's not what this video is going to cover. <laughs> it's actually going to cover specifically the residence plugin. This is sort of a two-in-one video actually because it's going to cover uh, a lot of the default information for residence and a lot of the stuff that is avius specific uh, starting out with the default stuff um your claim tool is going to be a wooden hoe and your info tool is going to be a string uh, i'm going to talk about this in one moment and this is uh what avius's configuration is using if you're if you're playing on a server and you don't know uh what residences tools are set to that specific server and you don't want to you don't want to bother the mods or admins you can just do res tool in the description or in the uh text box like this and there you go so the command is uh slash res tool and it'll show you what your configuration is actually using what I put these signs here for was just to kind of remind me that um, by default, you can only have a maximum of three subzones. And you can and you cannot sell subzones by default. Uh, I'm actually going to have to talk to Mike about this because uh, it could cause issues in the future uh, for large towns on Avias and stuff. Uh, but either way, this is by default. This is all you get. Um... If you would like me to do a proper walkthrough of this map, I definitely can. This is the Avius 4.0 test server. Um, but again, I'm not going to be covering that this video as cool as all of the builds actually are. Tons of work was put into it. It was a lot of fun. We're going to be heading down into the mine here. Because that is where the miners guild is. So this is my build. This is the Miner's Guild here, and we're going to begin claiming land. Using the feather, we can come over to one of the further corners in the claim. And I just left clicked that to set the first point, similar to World Edit or if you've used another claim. Uh, Claim plugin. And then what we can do is run over to an, the other corner and right click. This will set the second point. And as you can see, very vaguely, there is some particles. If you can't remember what your selection looked like or whatever, you can actually do slash R-E-S, select size. And uh, if you're lucky enough, you should see some uh, particles. Hmm. Well, they're showing in here. I bet you I'm not close enough. Sometimes you actually have to like fly all the way. Yeah, all right, so they were actually up here. I just couldn't see them. But that looks like everything is properly selected. All right, well, that's not entirely true. What about this little hallway over here? As you can see, our claim actually ends right here. Well, our selection ends right here. None of this is actually claimed yet. So what if I want this hallway included? I can do slash res select expand. 
and then how many I want to expand in this specific direction by. This is the south direction. I can go 20 to the south. And now that just expanded our selection 20 blocks to the south. As you can see, we're no longer getting particles because they're behind the wall. Okay, well, similar to what we just did back there, my selection ends here, and uh, all that's going to be left out. So I can just come into this claim, or selection, and expand it another 20 there. And since I'm expanding them in those two directions, I'm just going to go ahead and do both of these directions. All right, awesome. Now, let's see. We should be ready to actually officially claim this and make this the Miner's Guild. Using the command I'm typing in right now, this slash res create and Miner's Guild, Miner's Guild being the name of the claim, you can name it whatever you want. Keep in mind, it is important to have all spaces as this underscore because of the way Residence formats um, its actual claims. It, it's, just, it's just how they format it. <laughs> anyway, so let's still go ahead and run that command. And as you can see, it says the area has been created. Or well, Residence, but... Um, as you can see now, we have this welcome message. This confirms that you're actually in the claim. Running a little ways away from this claim, you get a leave message. And these messages can be configured however you want. But let me first talk about the information tool. By left clicking on the ground, you can see there is no residence here because we have left the residence. Now we're walking in here, we get the welcome message, and we can left click and see all of the information here. The owner, flags, which I'll get to in a minute, and how much the residence is worth. So for standing inside of a residence, we can actually edit the message by doing red slash res message, the name of the residence that we want to change the message. It's easiest to stand inside of the res uh, residence and uh, tab it in. It'll autofill. Let's say we want to change the enter message to just being welcome. And if you noticed here, these are actually placeholders or variables. You can change these to whatever you want them to be. Uh, well, I should say it's going to autofill. So percent player is going to say, uh, welcome pre on Hydra. This is going to be a filler. And there's a whole list of them, which I can show you in a minute. But anyway, we're just going to change it to welcome. As you can see, now leave, leaving Miner's Guild. And when I enter, it says welcome now. And I believe slash res placeholders. Ah. Because I'm in player mode, I don't actually have access to this. That would be something you would have to uh, talk to your server owner about. But um, either way, I don't have permission to this, so we're not going to worry about it. If, if you're really looking for a list of placeholders that you would like to include in your welcome or leave messages, I am going to leave the... Uh, I'm going to leave the wiki in the in the description, so you'll be able to find it pretty easily. All right. Cool. That's working. So flying back over to here. We are now in our main Miner's Guild claim. And let's say uh, I'm ready to sort of start customizing how I want my residents to interact with other players. I can do slash res set, and that's going to pull up this fancy GUI. I can change what I want players to be able to do or not be able to do in the residence. Let's say I do not want 
people to be able to place things here. I can do that, and boom, no longer can place things. Uh, but that might be an issue, right? Because I'm the owner, I want to be able to build. Let me do such res uh, p set player set. Uh, that is short for player set right there. And you can actually run this command with the player's name. In my case, since I'm the owner, I have access, access to this command. And um, I want to allow myself to be able to place things, even though everyone else cannot place things. As you can see, that works. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I can no longer place things again. So it's a good idea to run the pset command on yourself and other players you want to individually trust uh, for this resonance. Whereas reset is going to be general purpose and used for everyone. Um, Everyone else not trusted or specifically dedicated by you to be able to build. If that, if that makes sense. But All right. So coming back over here, I'm going to just enable placing. And if you want a more quick way to, uh, to have some access to these flags, you can do res set. And as you can see, it's going to pull up a whole list of flags you have access to. In this case, I can do place like that, and true. Very fast. But if you do like the commit, if you do like the GUI, you can do slash reset. I'll pull up all of the available ones for you here. Awesome. So that's how flags work. Uh, we're gonna get a little more complicated with them later. We're, we're ready to turn our attention here to the in. The inn is a unique building because you're most likely going to build an inn in hopes to uh, sort of like, you know, just allow players passing through your town to come here, uh, rent a room, and you can make money off that. So I'm going to define the inn with this corner by left clicking. And. Eh, we'll get the front of it too. Sure, why not? We'll do that. As you can see, it's got the entire thing here. And if you want to see it again, similar to when we were creating the main area, you can run the select command with the size and it will highlight it briefly and tell you a little bit about the information. Ignore the land cost here. Because what we're actually going to be doing in this case is creating a subzone. Now, unlike regular residence claims, subzones are going to be specifically uh, defined by the cube you selected. On Avius in particular, you get all blocks from uh, sky height to bedrock. For free. You only have to pay for blocks along the x-axis. By default, in residence, you will have to pay for uh, any extra y blocks that you're selecting, if, if that makes sense. It's a, it's a little tricky to visualize, but just know that on Avius, when you select a plane, you're only paying for a flat plane of blocks, not along the y value. Okay, so we have our in selected. We're ready to create the subzone. What a subzone is, it is essentially a separate claim within your claim. So you're now dividing your one main piece of land into several different pieces of land that you have individual control over. So we're going to call this subzone the in. Now, using the string, you can left click and see. We are now in minersguild.in. Leaving this, 
ah, we get our welcome message because we just left that subzone and entered our main subzone, which we have the the um the description is welcome or welcome message is welcome. Anyway, and it the the subzone also gets its own welcome message, so that could get a bit annoying, right? We could turn that off by doing such res message miners guild dot in. See, that's where that tab comes into play. It's very easy to identify what re uh, residence you're standing in. And we'll just do uh, enter remove. Ah, there we go. Welcome. And we no longer get that giant uh, welcome message for the individual subzone. What's kind of nice is if you did want to do something fancy, you get to and be and do welcome or and we can just do like uh in if you kind of want to give just like a little cue to players that they're now in the in right all right well so we have our in defined but this building still isn't really useful because uh as a player i'm gonna walk in here and not be able to access anything i won't be able to rent a room it's kind of useless this is where we're gonna start defining our rooms. So similar to how we did the main claim and our in subzone, we're gonna create a third subzone. And this one is gonna be three levels deep, meaning, uh, there we go. Meaning this subzone is, as you can see, here is our main miners guild claim. The in is within the Miner's Guild claim. And we're about to create a room which is going to be within the in claim. So it's three zones deep, which is the max you can do on, well, both by default and on the Avius server. Just going to make sure we got that selected still. Looks good to go. So I'm going to come in here. You don't have to go into your selection, but I'm just going to do it. I'm going to run the subzone again. And we are going to call this uh, pest uh, room one. Sure, why not? That might keep. There we go. We are now in test room one. Cool, right? I am going to go ahead and remove the message for this. There we go. And next I'm going to Put this room up for rent because as you can see we have this claim or well we have this room defined properly but it isn't usable still the way you can put land up for rent is by doing such res market rentable and as you can see do this is where you got to be careful there's a big difference between running your base claim and your specific room or land claim. As you can see, we are three levels deep here. Miners Guild dot in. We are inside, this room is inside of the in. And dot test room one. This is the room we are standing in currently. I purposely failed that command. So you could see how this command actually works. Slash res market rentable. Uh, is going to require several things. It's going to be the residence or room or subzone, whatever you want to call it. And then it's going to ask for how much this zone should be uh, to rent for how many days. Will the player be, be allowed to uh, renew the room once their time expires? Will it Will the room stay in the market after being rented or should you have to manually put it back up for for sale or 
you know, to be rented in this case. And should the player be allowed to auto pay? And this is where you can actually make it to where the player has to remember to log in and renew their room once it expires. Okay. So I think we're ready. Let's put this mark. Let's put this up on the market. Let's say we want 50. Uh, and this is going to be in whatever server currency you're using on Avius. It is silver pieces, but this could be dollars, but whatever your server calls it calls it, it will be tied into the economy. Let's say 50 silver pieces for one day. And this is real life day, not Minecraft. And we are going to say allow renewing. They're allowed to renew. And it will stay in the market so other players can rent it once whoever's renting it currently is done with it. And finally, we'll, do we want them to be able to auto renew? Meaning, even if the server, or even if the player is not on the server, it will still remove money from their account and they can keep the room. We'll set that to true. A lot of these variables, well, actually, this one being the major one, can be uh, edited by the renter. If So what that means is, if I set allow auto pay to true, the player renting the room can say, oh, I don't actually want to auto renew. So I'm going to set it to false in my case. But if I set this to false, then the player renting the room will have no choice but to come in here and manually auto pay. But we're going to leave it to true. So that way they have no problem to worry if they do not want to. They can they can just go ahead and, uh, and have it auto renew or pay. Okay, cool. Great. We have the room defined. It is actually on the market. And a way to verify that is slash res market list rent. And any any player on the server can run this if they're looking for like an in-room. Whatever. They can they can run this and boom. As you can see, uh we actually have two rooms here, right? Ignore this top one. This is a bit of a uh leftover from a test. Uh I was unable to delete it because, um, yeah, well, just, just ignore it for now. This is a little bit of a bug. I've got to kind of backtrack it and I want to report it to the residence devs, but either way, it's just kind of left over. What we're going to be paying attention to is this miners guild dot in dot test room one 51 true, meaning it's going to cost 50 silver pieces for one day and auto pay is true if the user would like to opt into that or well renter would like to opt into auto pay and this is the owner of the sub zone like land so now if you want to kind of be a little inconvenient to do this uh, you can actually come in here and do slash res market rent miners guild dot test room one and I'm going to get this cannot rent your own land. So if you were a player, you could do that command. And then this is what I was talking about. You can define whether or not you want to auto pay. So I could run true. And it would pretty much say, okay, I want to auto pay for this room. Or I could run false and I would no longer auto pay for this room but I cannot rent my own land. So it's a bit tricky to showcase, but it does work. As a room, uh, as a room rentor, as a landlord, <laughs> no, um, but I, I just tar I just typed in market in there. Let me get a sign. Uh, the reason I was typing in market was because I was about to show you this. And if you noticed, I actually had this claim come out one block, right? For this reason. If I place down a sign, this is going to make it so much more user-friendly. I encourage everyone owning land, renting it, 
do it this way. Place down a sign with these two brackets and type in mar uh, market. Look at that. Perfect, right? It auto fills and creates a sign that anybody walking by can easily see the details of this room and right click it to rent the land, buy it, whatever you want to do, right? I believe um, that once you right click it, it, auto it will claim the land or will not claim it. It will rent the land, allowing the renter, the person renting the land to open chests to use furnaces and crafting tables and to sleep in beds along with opening doors. But in Avius, I believe everyone has access to opening and closing doors regardless. So that's what happens when you right click. But if you are allowed to continue to renew this land, um, you should be able to hold shift and left click the sign to uh, ex uh, extend your renting time. So by default, when you right click it, it will rent the room for one day. But let's say I want to rent this room out for a week. I can hold shift and left click to add days, like to queue up days. I can queue up to a total of 35 days, um, I believe. But you can click, you can hold shift, left click this seven times, and it will give you a week's worth of renting. Uh, and I think right clicking. Hmm. Anyway, just know that left clicking and right clicking while holding shift interacts with this in different ways. Uh, I cannot show that though, since I am the owner of this room. All right, awesome, right? So that's how you divide a subzone down several times and offer room to be rented. All right, so I think we're ready to kind of talk about selling land. Selling land is a bit different because if you're in sort of a, uh, if you're already in like a main zone, by default, you won't be able to actually sell sub zones. So that's something I'm gonna have to talk to Mike about because I think in Avius, you're gonna wanna be able to sell, oops, <laughs> let me move this off my hotbar. I've been messing around with the the default config of this plugin and it uses the wooden hoe like I mentioned before. Uh, all right, there we go. Feather left click there. And you probably wouldn't want to sell an in room, right? But let's say we do in this case. Uh, let me expand the selection. Display once, as you can see, we got this whole room and here. And I'm going to do such res subzone again. Be careful, sometimes it puts the list in there. And we're going to call this buy a uh, buy a bull <laughs> lands one. Right? Very unique. Anyway, so now we have some buyable land, right? This is the this is land we want people to be able to purchase and own forever. We can do, um, let's stand in it, first of all, and then slash res market sell miners guild. Be sure <laughs> whatever you do, make sure you are selecting this, right? That is going to be specifically the sub zone that you want to sell. And I'm going to let the command fail so we can take a closer look at what is going on here. So res market sell the residence and then the amount. Uh, I think it would actually be a good, good idea to do something actually. Let's left click and look at the value of this land. It is 646 uh, silver pieces. And we're going to want to make a profit off that. Especially since, oh, it's in such an amazing location. 
look at the beautiful view, right? Oh, it's it's you got to charge for all of that, right? So let's go with I'll just kind of back up to this. And let's say we want to set it for 2000, right? Ah, look at that. It is now for sale. Similar to what we did with the rentable room, we can actually put a market sign right here. Pretty nice, right? But I cannot buy my own land, obviously, because I own it. If we want to take this room down, or if we want to take this land off of the market, we can do slash res market release and this. We're running the confirm command. I forgot to add market here. Oh, you know what it is? Slash res market. Unsell. There we go. It is no longer for sale. As you can see, not for sale. But we want to we want to keep it for sale. And we want to see what all who else is selling land. What what's our competition, right? Slash res market list and sell. Or this is a useful command as a player to see, oh, I, I can afford a house. Where do I want to buy land at, right? There it is. It's listed right there. Cool. So we have went over how to sell land, how to, and uh, how to rent land as well. Keep in mind, be careful where you put your sub zones that you're selling. Because once a player buys this land, that is now their land. They own it. Where uh, they they can destroy, place, break blocks, whatever they want to do in that land. However, when they rent it, they only have access to interactable things. <clears throat> cool. So. We talked about how to divide into subzones and all that all that good stuff. It's all it's all here. So what about removing subzones? Let's say I have created a subzone like this. Right? I'm gonna select and do such res subzone. And we'll call this test room two. Oh, you know what it is? I don't think I actually expanded it far enough that way. So let's actually use this room. I'm not going to worry about expanding it right now. That's on. Oh, I was standing. Okay. Be sure you're standing right. Um, be sure you're actually standing inside of your main residence or uh, yeah, just just don't don't be standing in like a separate subzone and trying to create another subzone because it can't really communicate that way. So anyway, we're in the test room too, right? But let's say we actually don't we no longer want test room two. We're gonna do re uh, such res remove. And uh, from my experience, you have you don't need to put anything else. It will automatically find whatever subzone or main residence you're standing in, and it will target that. So doing such res remove enter, as you can see, it has found test room two. Click to confirm, and it has been removed. We can also do such res confirm and run that, and it will also confirm it all right now if we enter this room no more subzone 2 or residence uh or room 2 i mean whatever uh let's see An another thing we're going to want to talk about is shops in avius you can only have 
a shop inside of claimed land or an area defined by a residence owner as a shop. By coming up here, let's just verify we are in Miner's Guild. Yes. All right, I want to turn this into a shop, right? We're going to select this. And we're also going to want another corner of it. And this is a pretty good visualization here. It looks like it's going all the way up to the build height, but trust me, it is only going to select the blocks that I selected. Just make sure we're still in it. It seems like part of this could be outside of it. Ah, you know what? That one might not work because I think that one's partially in, uh, in my claim, but not all the way. So we're just going to quickly set this up. Ah, much better. There we go. Uh, so because this is in my claim, as you can see, it specifically has selected this cube. Oops. Just going to make sure we are all set. But I always like to do one extra block, right? Because we're going to want room for the rentable sign. Uh, this is in a weird spot, so I'm going to do two. Okay. I'm going to do such res subzone. Ah, it always puts list in there. And we're going to call this shop one. This can be called whatever you want. I am trying to figure out why that did not work. We're going to do that. And we're going to come out to here. There we go. So I must have selected it wrong or something at first. But anyway, we're inside of the shop now, right? Let's go ahead and do message shot one re, uh, enter remove. That way we don't need to worry about that spamming players. Um, and a couple things we want to set up with this piece of land before it can actually be a shop is we want to set a flag. We're going to set this as the shop flag right here. And what this is actually going to do is it's going to interact with the quick shop plugin. This is more AVS specific, but there are probably other servers out there that have something similar to this set up. But if you're here for an AVS tutorial, this is how this works. Let's get a chest. And an item we want to sell. This can be anything. Uh, it's a trap chest. That's not going to work. All right. So we have our chest. And let's get outside of this residence because I'm going to show you a couple things. Uh, sure, we'll come over here. And as you can see, we place down a chest. And this is the way the quick shop plugin works is you place down a chest. And you can do slash QS 
or Quick Shop, whichever you prefer, and create. And then your price. But I'm going to do, and we'll say, we're going to sell this chest that I'm holding in my hand for 20. Ah, as you can see, we get this command fail. Integration residence denied. The, uh, the shop creation. Okay. And that is working as intended. We are in the wild currently. As you can see, there is nothing here. There's no residence. You're not in a residence whatsoever. Shops can only be built inside of residences and not just anywhere inside of residences. Specifically where residence owners has residence owners or landowners that have purchased land within a residence has, has defined a shop location. To prove that, here we are inside of the Miner's Guild. And let's say I'm a player and um, I have rented land here, right? I have rented this house. Yeah, let's go inside of the house, actually. Actually, this isn't inside of the miner skill. Whoops. All right. Uh, let's say this land comes with the house. Anyway, I'm like, ooh, I'm going to make a shop right here on along the side of the road. Even though the residence owner has not said I was able to. Ah, I still cannot create a shop here. Uh, but why? I'm inside of the town. I should be able to create a shop, right? Uh, yes and no. You actually need to have the oops, shop flag set. As you can see, this piece of land has not been defined as a shop and is not able to have a shop created in it. All right. Let's see, so this is our shop now. And let's say I've rented this piece of land. Right? And I have my shop, right? Well, this is actually going to work. And I'm gonna show you why. Uh, as I, well, I guess I already showed you why and explained it a couple times now. But that is due to this shop flag. With it enabled to true, and me properly renting this piece of land, I can come over here and do slash, uh, whoops, quick shop, create, and we're gonna sell this for 20. Ah, success, right? We can now stock up our shop. And that was possible because of the shop flag. And you need to be able to actually be renting this land. Because Quick Shop checks two things. One, does this does this land have the shop flag set? The next thing it checks is can the player interact in open chests, right? So if you do not if you do not actually own or or are not actually renting this land, you cannot open chests. Therefore, the shop command will fail and you will not be able to make a shop. So, let's go ahead and put this up for rent. Whoops, I just tabbed out. All right, res market rentable, minersguild.shop1, and let's say it. For this, it's going to be a thousand for seven days. And we'll just put the rest as true. Res market rentable, or list, I mean. Uh, rent. Oh my gosh, can't type. Ah. And as you can see, we now have our shop available. Another cool thing that the shop flag opens up is the ability to have a bit of a uh, shop competition within your town. So players visiting know where to buy the best goods and other things like that, right? And the way that that works is doing slash res shop 
and you can actually get a list here uh, by running this res shop list you can click on that and look at that this is actually going to help players find where shops are located at by default uh i'm actually gonna have to tell mike about that because you should not be able to teleport to shops in avius teleporting is a bit of a it's it's definitely not something you're going to commonly run into um, on the server. Uh, this is something I actually need to test for myself, but outside of the Miner's Guild, can I get a shop list? I can. So, even if you are not inside of a residence, but you are looking for a shop in particular, here you can see all of the available shops. And I'm going to go ahead and abuse the teleportation feature. Let's go ahead and add a, uh, add a shop description to this. And we're going to call this Amethyst Shop. I definitely probably spelled that wrong, but I don't care. Oh, all right. Interesting. So why didn't that work? I bet you I'm missing a. That's the resident shop description. Must be missing something. Uh, let's just say buy items here. Oh, interesting. It seems to be ignoring this first word. So I'm going to add just a character here. And we'll see what that effect does. Uh, R-E-S shop list and by hovering over top of this it still says no description all right uh i guess the description system is a bit bugged uh that's odd but uh one thing that's not bugged is the shop votes and likes and by default they're both enabled i don't know uh let's just go ahead and do this likes and uh, I don't actually know how I don't I haven't done a ton of messing around with this. This is kind of me just uh, messing around here. Oh, you actually have to. I think it's like how many of these can I give? OK, zero to ten. So let's say you gave ten votes to the shop and now I can do shop list. Uh, and here you can see the shop's rating now, right? So, kind of cool. You can set up like a bit of a uh, friendly competition between towns around your... or Friendly competition between shops around your town. And since this is rented, I'm going to go ahead and add a market sign. And now players passing through can rent the shop. Ask the residence owner to set up a description uh once that works there's probably something i'm doing wrong honestly uh and yeah it, it, there you go that's how i do shop <laughs> all right now uh, that that should pretty much cover a large uh portion of the residence plugin and kind of showcase the flexibility one thing I think I, I do want to kind of show you, though, is we have a bit of an issue. Look at this. We are actually inside of the Miner's Guild, right? But the Miner's Guild is underground, and this is a very extreme example. Because most of the time, when you create uh, your claim or whatever, you're going to want to own everything, right? But... This is a very unique case because there's a town above the Miner's Guild. But uh, we, the Miner's Guild, don't want to interfere with above ground operations. So we would like to let everybody kind of roam around, build freely, whatever. But have our area underground claimed. 
what we can actually do is we can allow placing and building. I'm actually going to just go ahead and do res set build true. What that just did was it changed the miners guild claim to be available to be edited by anyone. I do not recommend doing this ever, but this is just to kind of show you how things can be broken down um, in an event like this. So this should be this should be the inn. Yes, and this should be the miners guild right here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we are going to select this corner. We're going to come down into this building, right click, and then once again, we're going to do res select expand 20. All right. And finally, slash res select size. As you can see, I have this whole area down here selected now, right? What we're actually going to end up doing here is uh i better let me get that hallway over there too let me just make sure i'm inside of my selection and i'm facing this direction here select expand 20 this way uh and we can't expand 20 this that way because we're going to interfere with the in which is already protected and we're expanding east by 20. So that should cover the underground area that the miners guild will be working in, right? Res subzone create or nope, not create. Don't do that. Uh, we're gonna call this subzone guild hall. There we go. So check that out. You're now in the guild hall. Coming up too high is going to actually remove us from the guild hall. This is going to be the general area, meaning people can actually come in here, build, destroy anything they want to do because this flag is enabled, the build flag, which is what I want in this case. But everything underground where the miners guild will be operating um, is going to be protected. As you can see, the build flag is set to false. Same with the inn. Players will not be able to come in here and grief this area. Um, everything has now been divided into its own sections. And... Yeah, everything should be good to go with the Miner's Guild. Now we, now we are ready to begin operation and open up to the public. Anyway... I'm going to fly back up above ground here just to kind of show you. That we are still in the general area up here. As you can see, we have left the residence. There we go. And... That should be everything I needed to cover right now about this plugin. But please, if you have any sort of questions or run into anything while playing on Avius or the Residence plugin, let me know in the description because uh, I can always make another video going into more depth about how a certain command works. There are a ton of them, right? And I'll do my best to explain uh, whatever kind of issues you guys run into. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, please, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And uh, you can subscribe, but uh, my uploads are very few and far between. I've been considering doing a Let's Play on the Avius server, but I'm not the best commentator. So if that'd be something you'd be interested in, then go ahead and let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And... Happy surviving.